Holy f guys, it just went down in the DMs, and by that I mean them markets, of course. But no, seriously, today was a huge day for stocks and a day that many investors, including me, were circling on their calendars. Now, keep in mind that this video will likely be released on Sunday, but I'm filming this video on Friday night and the markets just closed. So what happened? Well, a multitude of companies reported earnings today, but the one I personally cared about the most and the one that will give us the biggest indication of how quickly a recovery after this pandemic is possible was Alibaba, who just reported earnings for the first quarter ending in March 31st. Now, why are these particular earnings so important for all us investors? So here's the thing, even though a lot of major US companies also reported earnings this week, such as Foot Locker, Nvidia, Lowe's, etc., those only tell maybe 20% of the story because you have to remember that the US wasn't really impacted much by the current health situation until pretty much late February or early March. So for most US companies, Q1 earnings aren't really representative of what's going on in the world right now. For most companies, we won't find out how this whole thing has really impacted their business until the second quarter. Whereas Alibaba being a Chinese company, they've really been impacted by this mess since early January. So this quarter that they just reported is extremely representative of everything that's going on right now and can give us investors a good indication of what we can expect to happen in the US markets in terms of how quickly can we bounce back from all this and is it going to end up being a V-shaped recovery or are we strapped in for an elongated recovery? So without further ado, let's get right into the numbers. So despite obviously being majorly negatively impacted by the health situation, Alibaba still managed to pull off record sales on their platform for the year, totaling over $1 trillion in gross merchandise volume throughout the Alibaba network of stores, which is an absolutely massive milestone. And with over 960 million global active users, come on guys, those kinds of numbers are absolutely unreal. It's hard to even truly fathom scale of this magnitude. Your knowledge of the future to play the stock market. We could make trillions. Why make trillions when we could make billions? By the way, if you're a fan of Austin Powers or just want to help the channel out, please smash that like button as it really helps us with the YouTube algorithm and gets the video shown to more people. And these videos do take me a long time to make, but I love making them for you guys. So thank you for helping out. I appreciate you. So it goes without having to say that Alibaba is one of those once in a lifetime unicorn kind of companies. Cause remember, you don't see many companies that are able to pull off numbers like that during the best of economic times, let alone during a global pandemic like the world has never seen before. And on top of breaking the 1 trillion mark, they also still managed to have 22% year over year revenue growth and 58% year over year cloud computing revenue growth, which really excites me. And if you watched my first video, you know that cloud computing is one of the sectors that I'm extremely bullish about for Alibaba's future. And I think it will be a massive growth driver for the stock in years to come, just like AWS has been for Amazon. Not to mention that Alibaba announced a few weeks back that they will be investing over $28 billion into building its cloud infrastructure in the coming years. So expect that growth to only keep soaring. <laughs> so Alibaba pulling off better than expected revenue not only shows me that this company is well equipped to thrive under current circumstances, but also signals to me that Chinese consumption is recovering and bouncing back pretty quickly after reopening, which is a good signal for the US retailers and our markets as well. Now, as much as I wish I could say everything that they reported was rainbows and sunshine, we all knew that that was, wasn't going to be the case going into this. So here are the negatives. The major one being that Alibaba's Q1 net profit fell nearly 90% due to all their investments during the pandemic, which I imagine a good portion of those added expenses 
we're just trying to keep everything running as smoothly as possible and amp up their logistics despite all the crazy stuff going on. Remember, Amazon, which is the company that has probably gained the most from this whole situation because pretty much everyone in the US is now buying everything solely online since we have no other option, since pretty much all retail stores are closed. And even Amazon, when they reported earnings just a few weeks ago, yes, revenues were up as expected, just like Alibaba, but their profits took a massive hit. And in fact, Jeff Bezos himself said that even though Amazon expects to end quarter two with some four billion in operating profits, they actually plan on spending the entirety of that profit on expenses related to the pandemic, such as getting the products to the customers, i.e. ramping up their logistics, because it's becoming really hard for businesses to meet the demand while managing all of the health concerns ongoing. So primarily due to the massive dip in profits and a bleaker than usual forecast for 2020, along with some US-China tensions, which I will talk about a bit later in this video, Alibaba shares took a 5% hit after the markets closed. Now, if you remember, this is exactly what happened to Amazon shares after they reported earnings. Their stock plummeted, despite the fact that they are absolutely crushing it right now their stock was still down around 4% after earnings, primarily due to the lower profits and the bleaker forecast going forward. So personally, the 5% dip for Alibaba doesn't really worry me at all because again, I plan on holding this stock for many years, at least probably three to five years. So I'm not concerned about the temporary hit to profits. Actually, I think they performed about as good as any company can expect to under the current circumstances. Also, if you remember, that quarter two earnings for at least 95% of US companies are going to be absolutely terrible because everything is closed. So once more American companies start reporting earnings, forget about it. Alibaba's earnings are going to look absolutely incredible in comparison to what majority of US companies will be reporting for quarter two. Now, another concern that I've been getting a lot of questions about are the rising US-China tensions, and particularly a bill that may pass in the Senate, giving the SEC the power to delist Chinese companies from American stock exchanges. Now, obviously on headlines alone, this sounds absolutely terrifying, particularly if you invest in Chinese companies like Alibaba. But when you dig deeper into this whole situation, all they're really trying to do is crack down on fraud because there has been an increase in fraudulent activity with Chinese companies lately, i.e. most recently the Luckin Coffee scandal, a delivery first coffee upstart that once wild investors with ambitious plans to go toe to toe with Starbucks in China. But instead of building a massive empire, the three-year-old company served up massive fraud in its accounting books, revealing in April that it had exaggerated sales. So now instead of being the Chinese Starbucks, they are at risk of being completely delisted from the NASDAQ. Well, that's fantastic. A really smart decision, young man. We can put that check in a money market mutual fund. Then we'll reinvest the earnings into foreign currency accounts with compounding interest and it's gone. Uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. What's all gone? The money in your account. It didn't do too well. It's gone. So what are my thoughts on this whole situation? I honestly think it's a good thing. Look, companies that do fraudulent shit like what Luck and Coffee did should get delisted. And I'm not worried at all about Alibaba getting delisted. In fact, Maggie Wu, who is Alibaba CFO today, pointed out that their financial statements are already done in accordance with US GAAP. And again, their books have been absolutely pristine since 2014. So they have a proven track record. And I think this bill passing will only increase confidence in Chinese companies trading on the American stock exchange in the long term, because it will force stricter requirements on how their financials are handled. And as for the growing US China tensions, look, they're both two massive superpowers both with nuclear weapons and both sides know this and both sides know that going to war would be rather pointless as why would you go to war with someone who has nuclear weapons? It just makes no sense. And they both benefit massively from each other. So what's going to happen most likely? What will always happen? Eventually they'll get into a room together 
and eventually they'll work things out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. So again, I think Alibaba will be just fine going forward and I'm still very bullish on them for the long term. By the way, if you haven't already watched my first video on Alibaba that we dropped just a few weeks ago, I highly recommend you go watch it right now because I went into an extreme amount of detail as to why Alibaba can easily 2 to 3x over the next 5 years and why they are by far the closest thing to an Amazon-like company that we have in the world right now. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and if you enjoy watching my content, please consider smashing that thumbs up button and subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Peace and I hope you have a wonderful week.